here's another topology exercise that turns little boys into men okay we're gonna make the blade of this little pocket knife so you can go stab somebody and the reason this is so difficult is because we have these very specific shapes cut into the top of this blade so that's what we're gonna talk about here today now just a disclaimer this is not a beginner tutorial this is some hardcore topology all right so if you're a beginner I'm not going to explain every single tool that I'm using here for beginners if you want to learn more about the tools that you're gonna see me using this video I explained every single one of them in detail for beginners in my blender ebook there's a link for that in the description now there are three main points of interest on the side of this blade we have these ridges up here then we have this hole cut out of the side right here and then we have this hole which has more holes in it and this is where the rubber is really gonna meet the fucking road okay and we're gonna talk about how to make all these details here today so here's a very important principle that you have to keep in mind as you're modeling something like this and this is a principle that I call geometric consistency. This is going to be particularly important here because we, we want everything to follow a sort of grid pattern so that we can very easily transfer details from one point to the other. You're going to see me do this in this video. So enough of me just fucking talking. Let's start to, uh, working on the actual model. So we're going to add a plane here. We're going to move this plane to the corner in edit mode like this and we're going to extrude an edge to the side with control so it matches this line here and now we can add three loop cuts. And it's very important that these are perfect little squares. I didn't change the size of the original plane. I moved it by the grid with control. And now I'm going to press I to inset. Okay. I'm going to press, hold on a second. I'm going to press I to inset these individual faces here. I got my boundary enabled so this doesn't want to listen to me. And then we're going to press I to inset them individually. Okay. So you got to press I twice. And then we're going to set the thickness here to 0.5. And once we do that, we can W subdivide, select this extra edge loop, shift G, select similar length, and then X dissolve edges. That's going to dissolve all these extra edge loops. Now we're going to select one of these, shift G, select similar area. Then with our loop tool circle, we're going to turn this into a little circle. If you're not familiar with loop tools, I got a tutorial about loop tools. Just type in Aryan loop tools tutorial into YouTube. You're going to find it. X delete faces, and we're going to cut off this top part. And you can see that kind of looks like these little ridges, but of course, we're going to be able to use the subdivision surface modifier later on to make this a little bit cuter. Okay. So now we're going to take these edges from the bottom, extrude them down once, extrude them down twice. And I'm holding down control because I want to have a nice grid here. Okay. So I'm going to enable my face orientation so I can see my normals. I want everything to be blue. If it's red, it's a problem. We're going to place the cursor over here, delete the vertices from this face in the middle. That way we just have a hole here which has 12 edges so we're going to add a circle which has 12 vertices but it has a vertex here in the middle so we're going to rotate it by 45 degrees so we have an edge at the top and then in edge select mode we're also going to select all these edges around here w bridge edge loops and you can see that our normals are kind of fucked up so it doesn't want to do it the way we want it to do it so we have to fill in the hole and make sure that everything matches and then we can have a nice clean filling over here which we can now delete okay so now we're going to move over here, let's say four spots to the side, we're going to delete this and we're just going to duplicate this part, bring it over here, select everything and merge by distance. And then we can join these vertices here with J to just continue this straight line here. We're also going to do the same thing down here at the bottom and you want to delete all these faces. And after you do that, just take these vertices, slide them with double G, do the same thing over here, select everything and merge by distance. My shortcut for that is shift W. Okay. So that gives us our first big hole over here, but now we want to make the other holes, all right? So we need some more geometry, first of all. So let's extrude this out to the side a little bit further like this. Let's take it around here, add some more cuts. We're gonna take this a little bit further. Let's extrude it all the way to out here and add some more loop cuts. And my loop cuts have to match the grid in the background. And then we're gonna take this and extrude it down a little bit further like this and that just gives us enough space to make the rest of these holes now this is where things get even more interesting because now we have to cut out a hole where we're going to bring out this shape over here but i want it to be a little bit smaller so i definitely need to cut three out okay so three tiles height or width and then let's say i want to have a few less on my length so let's say something like this and then i'll duplicate this shape shift d with control I'll bring it over here but i have to delete three faces over here so that I can take this shape and bring it inwards and connect it like this. This is going to be my first 
little hole on the inside here. And then I want to have a circular hole, so I'm going to delete nine faces here. And maybe before I do that, with F, I'm going to fill this. I'm going to press o, uh, I for inset and O for outset uh, to push this outwards, except my out, uh, outset doesn't want to work because I have individual enabled, so I first have to press I and then outset. And then I can make this whole thing a little bit thicker so that my bridge between these two holes will be a little bit thinner, okay? So now I can delete this face or these vertices on the inside and now I'll use this geometry to make the circular hole. So I'll place my cursor over here. I'll take this section, shift these, scale it to minus one on the x-axis like this. We can merge everything by distance. And now we're also going to place the cursor over here so that with shifty, well, we're not going to do that yet because I wanted to copy this to the other side because first we have to rewire our uh, the geometry a little bit because I'm going to want to place a loop cut or an edge loop around this entire section. So I, when I place a loop cut here, I don't want it to curve around here. I want it to continue over here. So to do that, I'm going to rewire my geometry like this. Okay, with J, I'm going to join vertices like this. And then I can just select these edge loops here, X dissolve edges, and maybe I can scale this one down a little bit. So now when I add a loop cut, now it goes this way. It doesn't curve here anymore. It's very important that you're able to control the flow of your geometry when you're modeling something. And this is something that I learned from Thomas Cole in 3D, okay? So we did that, and now we can come over here and we can duplicate this over to the other side. Shift the right-click scale to minus one on the X axis. Our 3D cursor is not exactly in the middle by the looks of it, so we have to make sure that that's correct before we scale this. Or maybe this shape is not really perfectly aligned, so we can just fill this in manually like this. Okay. And now we need some more space here, so let's delete some more faces from this side. And we're going to take half of this shape and bring it to the other side. So let's say we're going to take something like this. And the reason we're taking half of the shape is so that we can later duplicate that one half and copy it over to the other side. So shift the right click scale to minus one. And then we're gonna place our cursor over here because that's the middle. And we're gonna duplicate this one more time. Bring it over here. No, we can take the whole fucking thing now. And then shift the right click scale to minus one. And now we can fill this with a couple of little faces like this, okay? So just like that, we got the inner holes. But now the question is, how do we make this big hole that's supposed to contain all of this stuff? And now I'm going to show you how to do that. All right, so we're going to fill each of these faces with F. And then we're going to select every single one of these faces like this. We have to do this in face select mode with our box select tool. And we're going to press I for inset. But again, we want outset so that we get an extra little edge around everything like this. And that edge is going to have a thickness of... 0.15 that's very important because we're going to have the same thing for the next inset operation that we're going to do so now we can lower this down a little bit so let's say gz control shift so we can lower it down by minus 0.2 units and then we're going to take these holes over here we're going to inset those we don't want outset this time we're going to inset them again by 0.15 and lower them by minus 0.2 units okay and now you can delete those faces and you can see you got a perfect little slope here. So now you have pretty damn perfect topology. So if with control two, you want to add your subdivision surface modifier, you're now going to realize that it looks pretty shitty. The reason it looks pretty shitty is because we didn't sharpen these yet. And I don't like to sharpen this type of shit until we're completely finished. Okay. And you probably still want to make a little blade here, but I don't really want to deal with that in this video. To be honest with you, we can make another video to deal with the blade itself the sharp part because that's a slightly different story and then this video is going to be 30 minutes long and then no one's going to click on my fucking video so if you're already here make sure to like the damn video and subscribe to the channel as well okay so now what you want to do is probably also add some thickness here so let's extrude this down and then we're also going to select all these edges so that we can add some thickness to them as well because you see when we added our subdivision surface modifier it made everything soft and shitty so we're going to ha have to add some bevels here to sharpen this stuff up a little bit, okay? So we're going to select all this. Our 3D cursor is down here. Our 3D cursor is the pivot point. So we're going to extrude this, align it down here with the bottom, okay? And now we can take all of our edges. You can now duplicate this if you want to mirror it over to the other side, like this. But you probably don't want to do this until you've made your blade. But I don't want to do the blade now. So let's just assume that you're making your blade. And then if you want to, we can do that in another video. 
if you let me know in the comments i'll make the sharp part which you're actually going to use to cut somebody right so we're going to select all the sharp edges like this and it depends on which part you want to sharpen because you can deselect these edges or you can keep them if you keep them and you bevel them with Control b which i'm about to talk about a little bit more in a second then they're going to be sharpened but if you don't select them then they're going to stay soft like this so it's up to you what you think looks better i'm just going to leave them selected because that makes it easier for me and we also have to make sure to select all the edges around these holes first of all the outside and then around the outlines of the holes on the inside as you can see right here make sure that you do not select these edges which are connecting the holes like this you just want to select the outlines of the holes okay so let's take care of this one then we're going to take care of this side as well select this hole over here now we got everything selected hopefully and with Control b we're going to add a little bevel there just a little one see we fucked up because we selected these edges and we're not supposed to so we can deselect those with a brush select tool like this and now look we also fucked something up over here at the top so now we should be able to bevel everything Control b Control b see this is a problem because we have an active subdivision surface modifier so we can't really see what's selected so you might want to disable that in the preview and now you can see that everything's good you can see which edges are selected so you can bring back your subdivision surface modifier Control b you need to make sure that this bevel has two segments and a shape value of one because by default this is 0.5 but you have to set it to one if you want it to sharpen your object correctly okay so object shade smooth and now look how beautiful that looks there are no shading artifacts on this it looks gorgeous if you show this to somebody they're going to be very impressed by your topology skills now of course you still probably want to you might want to reduce some of this geometry you might want to take this outline and slide it inwards to make it a little bit more clean and organized just in case Thomas Colin is watching but this is how I would go about making the top part of this blade all right so let me know in the comments if you want me to make the blade itself as well all right check out the fucking ebook and the link is in the description if you want to learn more about the tools that I use here but at least subscribe to the fucking channel and like the video and I'll see you in the next one